the entrance antiphon. When a profound silence covered all things, the night was in the middle of its course. Your all-powerful word, O Lord, bounded from heaven's royal throne. Shut it off. It's in my eyes. I have size 12 feet, so, and that spotlight is right in my eyes. No? Can you shut it off? Yeah. And if Father Murphy's watching from Ireland, I have no idea. That's all right. Sorry. Now I see all spots. <laughs> oh. I didn't know it was this much work. I would have done it myself. Sorry about that. That's all, that's all right. No, that's all right. I'll put up with it for all my sins. <laughs> okay, it's out. Don't watch, watch your head. Oh, you might be owning the church. <laughs> well, good morning. In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let's prepare for our celebration. Let's call to mind our sins and ask God for pardon and forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And our prayer of praise together. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the newness of the nativity in the flesh of your only begotten Son may set us free, for ancient servitude holds us bound beneath the yoke of sin. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. John. I am writing to you, children, because your sins have been forgiven for his namesake. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have conquered the evil one. I write to you, children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God remains in you, and you have conquered the evil one. Do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, sensual lust, enticement for the eyes, a pretentious life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. Yet the world and its enticement are passing away, but whoever does the will of God remains forever. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Give to the Lord, you families of nations, 
Give praise to the Lord, glory and praise. Give to the Lord glory due his name. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Bring gifts and enter his courts. Worship the Lord in his holy attire. Tremble before him and all the earth. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm not to be moved. He governs the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. A holy day has dawned upon us. Come, you nations, and adore the Lord. Today a great light has come upon the earth. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with all of you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. There was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phelan, of the tribe of Asha. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, They returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we have Anna, yesterday we had Simeon, you know, at the temple again. You know, and they were at the temple a long time, waiting and preparing for this child that would be coming. They knew, God touched their hearts, knew that something someday would happen. And here we hear today, Anna's experience of the presence of Jesus. So, but Simeon and Anna, really again, People, you know, Catholics have, I don't, I don't know my faith. I don't know this. I do. It's all right here today. Very, both, really. It's prayer. Really. And it's, you think that's it. That's it. It's prayer. Jesus throughout the scripture will tell people to pray. His disciples to pray. Even Jesus went out into the desert to pray. Before he did his public ministry, he was tempted. Tempted as we know. And yet by Satan. And every time he refuted Satan by prayer. So, which Catholic thinks is boring. I get nothing out of my prayer. Uh, God isn't hearing my prayers. I must be bad. I must be this. I don't understand that type of wording about their own self. I don't understand that. Because I say, who said God was mad at you? Well, he must be. He's not answering my prayer. He's not answering the prayer the way we want him to answer, really, most of the time. That's really what it is. I understand when people are seriously ill, that's totally different. I get it. We want that person to be healed. But sometimes the prayer is being answered by the Lord not healing that person. There's a reason for those things. We don't know. We won't know until we die. But we can't give up on prayer. Jesus asks us to pray, and we see what happens to Simeon and Anna today. God was faithful to their prayer. So prayer is an action, and it isn't boring. We must take it very seriously as Catholics, and I don't think we do, because we get mad. Like I said, well, you're not answering my prayer. I'm going to stop praying. That, ridiculous. We have to, it's, we want everything, and unfortunately today, everything is instant for us. We don't even have to open a door. The doors will open for us as we come closer. They open 
wide. We don't have to do much today. Everything is happening right away. So no wonder when we pray, it's not instant. Well, what's happened? Why isn't Jesus answering my prayer? I've done all these good things. Then we get mad. Then we get mad at the priest. Then we get mad at the church. And then we, we stop. We don't go anymore. Re- again, how foolish is that? We have been called by name, and I say it all the time, if you're baptized in this relationship, you are like Simeon, you are like Anna. We have to ponder, we have to wait, we have to prepare our minds and our hearts, and we do that by prayer. We do that by, if we have the opportunity to go to daily Mass, that's great, but if we go on the weekend, and unfortunately after the holidays, the Christmas season, the the population going on Sunday will drop off dramatically. Don't understand that either. But that's what happens. So no wonder our world is a disaster. No wonder people get angry at God because we are not faithful to prayer. Prayer is in action. The power of the Holy Spirit directed Simeon, directed Anna to be at that temple. The power of the Holy Spirit brought you here this morning. It is not a feeling. It is a conviction within yourself. It is the presence of God dwelling to move and to act. And we have to be prepared. And I say it all the time, because unfortunately, most of the time when you go to, especially maybe during the week, it's a little older population. But I have a degree in gerontology. That's what I did before I was a priest. I was a social worker. I worked with older people. And I didn't give them much slack. I worked at a medical adult daycare. Someone had a severe stroke, many problems, but I didn't give a lot of slack because they could do more in their own therapy, in their own relationships with their family. Oftentimes they were mad at their family and they didn't want to. They wanted to give up. I made sure they weren't going to give up under my watch. But that is our prayer. We must go. We must act. We must be prepared every second of our day how God is going to use us today. It is an action. We must, and I know you have pains and aches. It might be different for some of you, but not all of you. You're here, many of you, daily. There's a reason for that. You're like Anna. You're like Simeon. It is not because you have the time. It's wonderful that you do. But I tell people all the time, even they come to the shrine, especially when they come to confession, they come maybe a distance sometimes, I said, you know, they, get, they think God is so mad at them and they can't be forgiven for anything. But again, uh, you'll be here all day. I, I don't, I'd have to, Catholic education is horrendous. You know, that poor, I don't understand that type of understanding for people. But they do. But it's the Holy Spirit that brings people to the sacrament, even here. To, to reconciliation. You get in your car, you come here to church, and I don't care how far you live, but you still get in your car, or you walk if you're close by, you decide I'm going to leave my house, cold day, maybe rainy day, maybe a warm day, but I'm going to go to confession. That's the Holy Spirit. There's no other reason. It is the Spirit that prompted you to go and to act in the sacrament. It's the Spirit people drive long distances because I ask them sometimes we, how far did you drive and it's quite a distance sometimes they've driven to the shrine I said it's the Holy Spirit that you left your house you drove here and you needed to go to the sacrament of reconciliation so you're all right you're paying attention so that's like Simeon and Anna they pondered they waited rainy days sunny days cold days and they knew And maybe people even made fun of them. What are you doing here? You're still here? You're still praying for this Jesus, this this someone that's going to be coming? And they probably laughed at them. But prayer is in action. So it's not in our time. It's Christ's time. So we must be about the business of prayer. We have given ourselves to God. And we must go into the world, into society today. Again, it's a disaster. We all know it. That hates itself. So by our actions, Anna's actions were very simple. Coming to Mass, lighting candles probably, or going to the temple. But for us the same, they had candles in the temple. You know, we like candles. We go to the statues. They didn't probably have the statues. It'd be pagan statues all around them, but not in the temple. 
And we come here, we light statues. What do we do? We're praying. Again, in action. And we must really praise God for that. We must really celebrate ourselves in a healthy way. Not that we're better Catholics. But we must really, I mean, hopefully you are joyful that you've come here and been an instrument of the presence of Christ, the risen Christ, to go out. By you coming to the liturgy, you say the rosary after Mass, again, a very powerful prayer for many, many intentions. Things are happening through your words and through your actions and through this church community. But that's how Catholics have to think. And maybe it's not overcome, over, bear over, uh, People coming here, churches aren't full as we know. None of them are. The shrine's not full, Christmas and Easter. But other than that, but again, we must be faithful. We don't know how the Lord's going to work above my pay grade. I don't even worry about it. I get a little irritated, but I get don't worry about it. We have to be faithful because we are here, because we are praying, Things are going to be happening. We are transforming the world today, believe it or not, by our presence today. We are making the world better. It might not seem it, because we'll turn on the TV and we'll say great, see great violent things. But also we don't know how our prayers, how this liturgy in Taunton, Massachusetts, we know it's revealed when we die. Transform the world. Transform lives. Those you know and those you don't know. And that's Simeon and Anna. We think our prayers are boring. We get nothing out of it. That's what people, most Catholics think. And then they get mad, then they leave the church. They get mad at the priest, then they get mad at God, and they stop going to church, and then their life is a train wreck, a disaster. So we must be faithful. Your prayers are being answered, and it will, most of it will be revealed when we die. Jesus never, ever, ever would say, said, well, you're going to pray, you're going to know right away. I'll reveal to you right away. Maybe, sometimes, maybe in action. Our prayers were answered in, in a quick way for someone or for a situation. But most of the time, it doesn't happen that way. All, all through the scripture, Jesus will say, what is, the other word is faith. Your faith has set you free. Your faith has done this to you. Your faith will send you here. Your faith, it's all about faith. And that's why we're here this morning. You got up. You came here. You drove here. Out of faith, your relationship with Christ, out of your own prayer already in action, bringing you right again to the source of life, the Eucharist that we receive, to go out once again and unfortunately into the darkness of our world, to be that light through our prayer, to be that hope through our prayer, to be that love through our prayer, be that person of reconciliation, not only to ourselves, but to others through our prayer. Prayer in action, transforming the world, transforming our lives, transforming the the town of Taunton, believe it or not, by our presence, wherever we go today, as Anna and Simeon would go to the temple daily, you and I come to Mass for the most part daily. We go out. We're going back out into the darkness of the world. But by our presence, we represent the light, that risen light of Jesus coming into our darkness by our words and by our actions. And that action is motivated by our prayers. God bless you. And through our prayers, we bring the healing and loving presence to Christ. For Christ's church on earth, may the Lord guard and strengthen each one of us, his servants. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may the Lord grant them wisdom in protecting all in their care, especially children. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who struggle in faith, May the Lord console them with his promises and help them in any unbelief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all who worship in this place. May God's graces transform us in the image of Christ's love and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in the light of faith, may God bring them to eternal rest in him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And today's Mass is being offered up for Gloria and William Floor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray in thanksgiving for those individuals in our own lives who said to us that they were praying for our needs, for their kindness and generosity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for all those affected with COVID-19 and the variants, first responders and medical personnel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And drawing our prayers through Mary, we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given us, and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. The fruit of the vine, work of our human hands, will become for us a spiritual drink. Blessed Lord, wash me please and cleanse me from all my sins. And pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, He took bread in giving thanks. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for all of you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, 
He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many through the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Edgar, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you, pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. In confidence and in love, let us together recite the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord always be with you. Thank you. Please offer each other some sign of peace. peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. At this time, you can make a spiritual communion. I love you, O oh my God. I cannot receive you in holy communion. Come, nevertheless, and visit me with your graces. Come spiritually into my heart, purify it, sanctify it, and render it like unto your own. Amen. The 
bodies. And let us pray. O God, who touch us through our partaking of your sacrament, work, we pray, the effects of our power in our hearts, that we may be made fit to receive your gift through this very gift itself, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with all of you. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a good day.